Hey, my name is Ed Weir. I ran the third busiest Social Security office in the country. So today we're going to talk about all things retirement, uh, what type of documentation you need, when should you file for retirement, what's up with this whole annual earnings limit. We're going to talk about all that today. So when I talk about retirement, uh, Social Security retirement, um, people you know quite often say, well, I'm not going to retire. I'm still going to work. That's fine. It you know obviously depends your on your age, but you can still work. But Social Security calls it retirement, even though you can continue to work. So it's not technically retirement. Retirement, and retirement also includes retirement. So retirement, uh, getting Social Security benefits, starting the benefits on your own record from your own work history. It also means spouse. So if you're a spouse and you know you need to file on your own record, but you also want to file a spouse claim um, from a divorced spouse or a current spouse, that's also considered retirement. You have the same type of limitations in terms of annual earnings limit and everything like that. So that'll be included. And also survivor as well. If you are at least 60 years old, you can file for survivor benefits. And that's kind of a, a, a retirement type uh, claim as well. You are you have to be 60 years old and the same type of situation applies. You have to keep under the annual earnings limit and all the rest of it. So um, all three of those categories are purview for today. And we'll talk about all of those. All right. So the, the, the question I get all the time is when should I retire? Obviously, the earliest you retire is 62 years old. You get 60 if you're a survivor. So 62 years old is the early for regular retirement. And you can, you know, all the way, you know, to 70. I wouldn't recommend going past 70 because essentially every month you delay. So a lot of people are under the misunderstanding that, okay, uh, I have to do it at my birthday. I only get to increase, you know, if, if I delay, it, it, it'll only take effect on my birthday or I have to wait a year. I can't wait a month or, you know, but that's not true. You, every month you do wait. Every month you wait your benefit goes up from 62 years old all the way to 70 every single month. You don't have to do it on your birthday. You don't have to wait an entire 12 month period. Every single month you wait to collect your benefits, your benefits do go up. All right. So that's number one. And when there are a thousand videos out there telling, you know, when you should retire, should you do it at 62 or 65 or 67 or 70, whatever the case may be, and it's 100% a personal decision based on all of the factors in your life. So obviously health, your genes, you know, if, you, if you've got a family that, you know, lives past 100 years old, then it might be a good idea to wait till you're 70 years old and really max out those benefits. Because from your full retirement age until 70 years old, you get 8% delayed retirement credits every year. Um, it, total every year, but they can, they can break it down to months if, uh, if you so choose. Um, so that's a factor, but you know, if, if you need the money, if, uh, you know, health might be an issue, you know, your family doesn't have a lot of longevity, then 62 is probably the date for you. So it's, nobody can tell you there's always, as we used to call them in the Marine Corps barracks lawyers out there that, say this, that, and the other, and, you know, broad stroke and say, this is what everybody should do, but that's not the case. And I guarantee I will have comments. If you got any uh, questions or comments, make sure you put them down in the comments, but I have comments all the time to get it at 62. No, wait. So yeah, everybody's got their own opinion and, uh, we won't go into those, but all right. So again, the earnings limit, what are, what is the earnings limit this year in 2024? That's $22,320. Okay. As long as you stay under that, if you're you're talking about full retirement age, once you hit your full retirement age, depends, you know, what your what year you're born at 66 and six months or eight months or 67. But if you're going to file early, file for retirement benefits early, then you have to stay under that yearly limit, twenty two thousand three hundred twenty dollars. However, what a lot of people miss is the first year you can go to a monthly limit. Okay. So let's say you're 63 years old and it's July and you've already made $50,000 and you say, well, the limit is $22,320. So I guess that means I can't retire this year. I have to wait till next year because I've already made too much. Nope. Nope. Not an issue. 
you can, Social Security can use a monthly test the first year, only the first year. So the first month you go under $1,860. So you stop working in you know, July or you reduce, you go, you go part-time in July. So that month you made a million dollars from January till June. You were way over the annual limit. But starting July, you're not going to make a million dollars anymore. You're going to make $1,860. Under $1,860, you're going to make zero or whatever the case may be. Social Security can start your benefits in July going forward. And the following year, you have to stay under the annual earnings limit. And then once you hit your full retirement age, it gets even a little bit more complicated. The year you turn your full retirement age, for instance, this year, you can make $59,000 and some change. So, And then anything over those numbers... For early retirement, Social Security holds back $1 for every $2 you go over. The year you reach your full retirement age, $1 for every $3. And people say, okay, how do they hold that money back? Well, basically, if you go into Social Security and say, okay, I want to you know, start my benefits in July, and but I'm not going to go, uh, I'm going to go over that amount. So, well, number one, they'll tell you, you know, don't go over, um, or we won't start you until August or September, the first month you do go but the following year, if you happen to go over, you just so, uh, call Social Security and say, hey, next year I'm going to make about $1,000 too much. And $1 for every $2, they'll hold back the first check, that first check. If you're going to be quite a bit over that, they'll hold back you know, however many checks. And you'll say, wait a second, I'm, I'm going to lose that money. Well, you're not going to get the checks because you're going over. However, once you do reach your full retirement age, every month you didn't receive a check, they will add it back in to your benefit amount. So the best way to understand that is if you took 30 months early retirement, so your benefit amount is reduced by 30 months. But then after 10 months, you go back to work. So you only use 10 months. Once you hit your full retirement age, you're, they're going to start your benefits, but you're not going to be a 30 month reduction. Your reduction will only be 10 months. They'll throw that other 20 months back in there. So, you're, so you won't be losing that. So that, that's, that's not an issue. And you can also change your mind. Um, you know, if uh, you retire at 63 and, you, you know, do like me, I <laughs> retired and about a week later, I got super bored and now I'm doing this. Um, but, you know, a month later, a year later, someone offers you a job, you decide to go back to work or something. And all you have to do is call Social Security and say, yeah, I, that whole retirement thing, I, I, you know, you're not deleting your application. You're not withdrawing your, your application. You can only do that within the first year, and then you have to pay all your money back. But what I'm talking about is suspending your benefits. So you don't have to pay your money, all the money back when you suspend your benefits. A year later, two years later, three years later, you call up and say, yeah, I've got a good job. I'm going to be making, you know, $50,000 a year. So just go ahead and stop my benefits, suspend my benefits, and they'll stop their benef stop the benefits until you hit your full retirement age. And then you can turn on your, your, your benefits at your full retirement age. And again, they'll put those, those months back into it, and that's automatic. So you don't have to pay it back. Again, there is an option to pay it back within the first year if you decide, yeah, um, yeah, this whole thing wasn't for me. Um, I don't want the 12-month reduction. So I want to go ahead and completely withdraw my application. And here's all the money back that you gave me. Um, not many people do that, but a lot of people do just say, oh, yeah, I'm going over. I'm going to suspend my benefits. And if it's only over a little bit, a little insider trick here, is if you're going to go over, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars or something like that, and you're going to owe the Social Security Administration on a five hundred thousand dollars or something, um, rather than have the Social Security suspended, what some people do, because the Social Security computer system is based on Fortran and COBOL from the 1970s, it's not the most intelligent and it messes things up. If you call up and suspend your benefits for a month or two, and it's sometimes it's difficult for them to start, and it's just comes up to a nightmare. So what some people do is they said, you know what, I'll just go ahead and go over. I know I'm going to owe $500 or $1,000 or whatever the case may be. And then what happens next year when you do your taxes and you notify the IRS of how much you made and the IRS notifies Social Security how much you made. And then the computer, it's pretty good at doing this. Computer will say, okay, you know, John was $1,000 over. And they will send you a nice little 
nasty gram that says you owe us five hundred dollars one dollar for every two dollars you go over and when you get that it'll say you know immediate payment due and you just you know write them a check or if it turns out you can't pay it at that time you can set up a, a payment agreement and zero interest by the way um yeah for overpayments i've done a bunch of videos because they recently changed the regulations on uh, on overpayments so yeah that's a that's an option that uh, that people do do um another thing you need to consider when you're thinking about retirement whether you should do it at 62 65 or whatever is your spouse you might not care about your divorce spouse but they they can start their benefits on your record without you having a file if you've been divorced for two years, but your current spouse can't start their benefits on your record until you start receiving benefits. So that's another consideration. So if you're currently married, you start your benefits and your benefits, if your benefit is twice as much as theirs, they can also get up to half of your benefit amount. And it's, you know, the calculation. I did a video on this uh, a few days ago about how to calculate um, spouse benefits. But long story short, your spouse can't collect benefits on your record until you actually start receiving those benefits. So that's another consideration on how you're doing your calculations on when you should actually start. And children, I just talked to somebody yesterday and going to wait. They were going to wait until their full retirement age, but they have two young children under the age of 18. and they could receive benefits. And so he was like, okay, well, no, I'm, I'm not going to wait now. I'm going to go ahead and start it because it's not only my benefits, it's my children's benefits. And so they should get benefits as long as possible, as soon as possible, because once they hit 18, those benefits are going to stop unless they're in high school. Then it continues until they graduate high school or 19 in two months. That's the thing about social security uh, is uh, there's exceptions, the exceptions, the exceptions, there's like 20,000 pages of policy, it's, uh, um, you know, you go to ssa.gov and it's so overwhelming. There's just so much information. Uh, the social media sites out there, there's just so much incorrect information. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's difficult. Another insider trick is a lot of people don't know. Um, okay, uh, a lot of people contact me and say, well, you know, I, I don't want to retire, but uh, I'm disabled and um, I, I just can't work anymore. You can file for retirement benefits and disability at the same time if you're under your full retirement age. So basically, the idea is you're 62, 63 years old, and you have a disability that prevents you from working, and that disability is going to last 12 months or longer. You know, not it has last 12 months or longer. You could have become disabled yesterday and still file as long as that disability that you just happened yesterday will last 12 months. It's not something that's not a short term disability. But you can file for the disability. But as you've probably seen, I've done videos on this. Social Security disability takes forever to get approved. Six months, nine months, if you're lucky. And a lot of people can't, you know, they, they, they can't live for six or nine months without having a job and waiting for their disability claim to be approved. But if you're 62 years old, you can do both. And all you have to do is read the comments of how many thousands of people have said, I wish I would have known that when I was, you know, I wish Ed was here with his YouTube channel 10 years ago or five years ago or last you know, month when I made this decision. Um, sorry about that. But here I am today. So you can file for disability and sit there and wait for six months or so. But at the same time, get your retirement benefits started okay they're going to be reduced because you're filing early anytime you file benefits early from social security pretty much on every program it's reduced um, and then six months later a year later when your disability is approved then they will switch you to disability but there's one caveat to that that your disability benefits will be reduced based on however many months you were waiting so there would be a six month reduction of your disability benefits because you took retirement for six months. But again, you'll have those benefits available to you. Um, 
while you're waiting for your disability. And, and if you're going to file for disability, I just did uh, three or four videos on, on disability insider tips, tricks, and secrets to help you get your uh, claim approved. So make sure you check that out. So again, when to file for retirement, completely your decision, you're based on your health, longevity. If you're working, when you're going to stop working, do you have other, you know, uh, spouses that are also dependent on you filing. You have children that are dependent on you filing. Um, do you also want to file for disability and, and you need money in the meantime? So all of those, those are the decisions. Those are the questions you need to ask yourself and anything else. Again, um, if you're watching this live, make sure you put your question in chat. If you're watching this recorded, make sure you uh, come back, subscribe. And next time we are live, you can ask any question you want. And all right. so. Another question of when is when to do the actual application, when to file. And like I said, I've done hundreds of thousands of retirement claims and uh, the, the process is pretty easy. Um, you call up Social Security, call the 800 number, schedule an appointment and you can have a phone appointment or in office appointment. If you have a phone appointment, you know, the, somebody from your local office will call you next Tuesday at two o'clock and they'll do over everything on the phone. And if it's an easy retirement application, which 90% of them are easy, um, I've done a hundred thousand of the you know, hundreds of thousands and, and they take like 20 or 30 minutes. And by the time you hang up the phone, that the, the, the claim is adjudicated and everything is done. So very, very simple to start retirement benefits for 90% of the time. Um, there are other situations like if you have a, if the date of birth on your social security card, um, yes, the social, your social security card doesn't have a date of birth, but internally it does. Internally, your social security card has your name, previous names, your date of birth, um, your parents' names, first names, maiden names, the city and state you were born and stuff like that. So internally, your social security card has a lot more information. If all of that is correct, then very, very easy. Let me get to, uh, um, I'll get to probably one of the most important things here in a bit on that. Um, but when to do the application, um, a couple, three months before is more than enough time. Um, so it's pretty easy. And you can also go online and file for retirement benefits online. So you can do a retirement benefit uh, claim online for yourself. You can do a spouse retirement claim yourself online. You can do a disability application online. Can't do a survivor's benefits yet or children. Um, Social Security has been working on that for a while, but there's too many permutations and variables on that one. So, um, so that's, uh, that's uh, the how as well and exactly. So uh, online, um, over the phone or in office, I would definitely not recommend just walk down to your local Social Security office. Um, yeah, that's unless you've got a few hours to kill, um, it's probably going to be quite a while. And you don't know whether the particular office in my office, if you got in the door at four o'clock, then we would see you and we would take care of uh, whatever issues you have. But some offices, they, they, they run a little rogue. So even if you get in there, you'll be waiting two hours and they might say, well, we can't see you today. And you don't want that. So schedule an appointment or do it online. All right. Um, so here's probably one of the most important things about filing for retirement is making sure you get paid correctly. And the most important thing is your earnings record. So before you should do this every year, you should tell everybody in your family to do this every year, regardless of they're 20, 30, 40 years old, doesn't matter. Everybody should do this every year, right around tax season. Finish your taxes, do this. Go into socialsecurity.gov set up a my social security account yes it's a nightmare to set up and but it's difficult before a reason to make sure someone doesn't go in there and pretend to be you and start causing trouble so you go in there and you set up an account and you look to make sure your earnings record is correct everything in there is correct and the big thing you're looking for throughout your history throughout your work history the the biggest thing that the most common mistake is that year not even showing up. So if you worked in 1982, but your earnings record so zero, then something's wrong. The, the money's out there in limbo, okay? So you have to get that corrected. 
and I've got other videos on how to get that corrected. If, if you see any of those mistakes, come on back, uh, uh, you know, ask your question and I can walk you through that whole process. But the important thing is to make sure your earnings record is correct. Um, and then, so you look at that, you know, even, even if you have a phone appointment or an in-office in appointment, look before you go and bring it to the attention of the claim specialist that takes your retirement claim. Says, hey, I checked out my earnings record. Number one, they'll say, good job. And then you'll say, hey, 1982, it says zero earnings. I worked for the same company the year before and the year after. Um, so they'll, they'll tell you how to fix that or they'll be able to, they might be able to find the, uh, the benefits themselves. Usually they're in a, a suspense file. All right, if you're in the military, make sure you have your DD-214 available. Uh, there are some credits that Social Security can give you for particular times active duty in the military. It's very easy. Um, I'm an old Marine Corps Sergeant, everybody, you know, Veterans used almost always have their DD-214. They can lose everything else in life, but they, for some reason, we always keep our DD-214. Marriages and divorces and, you know, love notes and all that kind of stuff, they seem to disappear, but we always keep our DD-214. It's, it's always interesting. So anyway, um, documentation, other types of documentation. Um, if you, for most cases, you probably won't even need a birth certificate. A few years ago, Social Security changed the policy, the internal policy. If your Social Security card, again, the date of birth and the name and everything is correct, you were born in the United States, then we don't even need a birth certificate. Social Security doesn't even need a birth certificate. So don't go out there and wait to file for benefits because every month you wait. If you wanted to you know, retire at 62 and you know, you're a month before 62, and you say, okay, well, I wanted to retire, but I don't have my birth certificate. So let me go and order my birth certificate. And two months later, you get it. You might have just lost a month or two. So call, schedule an appointment. This is called protective filing. You want to call, schedule an appointment. And then as soon as you contact Social Security, you're protected. So if it takes you a month or two months or three months or four months to get those documents, it doesn't matter. You're not losing those months. Social Security can go back to the first time you call because you're protected. That's a protective filing date, as we used to call it, or they, they still call it that. Um, same type of thing for if you're filing a spouse claim, if you need a marriage certificate, divorce decree, don't wait on the documentation, call, schedule an appointment. Um, all of it, survivors, you know, death certificate. For, for, for survivors, you probably won't even need a death certificate because uh, um, most of that is automatic uh, reporting. All right. So that is the very long and short. I spent a little bit more longer than I wanted to, 25 minutes, but I think it's important information. Um, if you're just here for that part, have a beautiful day. But if you are going to stick around and you have questions, make sure you put them in chat there. Make sure you subscribe so you can find us in the future because I am here to make sure you get everything you paid into Social Security and Medicare and all the rest of it.